Alrighty, <clears throat> welcome back. Uh, this exciting part of this project here. Um, I woke up a little extra early today. It's a nice warm day today. I'm going to say warm because it's in the 60s. Or yesterday it was snot cold. Uh, right in the 30s. and My hands were cold and I just got to the point where I had to stop. But uh and I, I'm very happy I got as far as, as you know, we did yesterday. So, um, kind of giving you a, a close-up view of of our valve assembly here. Um, from the inside, you know, what we've been looking at so far has been everything from the outside. Uh, for those of you that have been paying close attention, um, we, uh, we can uh, basically say two things. One... We didn't need to take this off, the the actuator lever that was on here, or the actuator lever that was on here. Um, I'm still on the fence about this plate. I, I have to see um, what the bolt holes look like. I don't believe that plate had to come off either. So, you know, you live and you learn. First time doing this, the pictures that I had offline weren't very good. I don't have a manual. Uh, Man, these manuals are like uh, almost $200, and that's used. So, and I don't have a problem paying that, I guess, uh, for the the knowledge that you get out of them. I, I've got, you know, one of those big three-ring binder, three-set for my um, International 1586, and boy, that sure has come in handy. I mean, you know, some of this stuff, uh, Hot Shot should be able to do without a book. And, uh, you know, here we are. We're all hot shots because we've gotten this far. So, um, you know, what we're going to do next is uh, come in here and, and uh, I like to take a uh, razor blade or scraper and take all this mess off of here. You know, all the old uh, uh, gasket material and get it as clean as possible. You know, here's... Here's probably the most critical part of putting it all back together. This stuff has to be clean, right? And not only does the environment of hydraulics need to be clean, but your ceiling surface needs to be clean. Um, one more thing I want to show you real quick. Over here. Chicken's chilling in the shade. That's not actually what I wanted to show you. Um, let's look in here. Uh, as you can see, I've got it covered got the hole filled in with the big old towel um, and that again due to the cleanliness uh, we want to keep as much of the nonsense out of there as possible and, you know what is nonsense well uh, rodents dirt you know I'm sure rodent if they want to especially when it's 30 degrees out last night and this morning you know got down into the 20s they're, they're gonna find their way in there and be happy as can be if, if they want it to float around in hydraulic hole but anyway you know the point is uh, you don't want any more nonsense and dirt and stuff in there and grime than there needs to be so uh, that's what we did and uh, you know this is usually what I do with all my projects uh, I pull carburetors well I plug the holes you know maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes an hour three days three weeks before I get back in there um, and you just don't want to leave it open you know not I'm gonna say atmosphere because I'm a vacuum kind of guy but uh, you, you don't want to leave it exposed to to the environment how's that that's probably a little closer to reality so okay um, again like we're gonna do over there we're gonna do the same here we'll go around and clean this up um, the more I look at this there may be a gasket on there can't tell for sure till I start scraping and and uh, you know cleaning up. If nothing else, there's definitely you know the, the RTV. Uh, nah, I don't think that's a gasket. If it is, it's awfully hard. So um, here we go. Uh, the game plan for today, folks, is is uh, get this gasket on. It's it's nice weather. Temperatures again in the 60s. You know, this, the sealant that, that we're going to use. Uh, I went and bought this Mega Black uh, Permatex material type stuff. Uh, it says on here, um, resists oil, water, 
antifreeze mixtures. So, you know, that's that's all the goopies that this thing's probably going to be exposed to. And uh, we want to give it every chance possible to uh, to last, unlike the last one. And again, um, you know, root cause analysis becomes kind of critical here because you don't want to be doing this stuff often. Uh, and And what we found so far was the three front bolts were loose. Um, and in my mind, you know, those three front bolts being loose gave way to the high pressure being able to push through the gasket material and, and cause that leak. Uh, again, you know, we, we kind of mentioned, could we have tightened it up and, and kept going? Well, you know, we certainly could have tightened it up and, and maybe get that spew of 20, 30 foot down to, you know, a dribble or drops or whatever and, and been able to finish putting out hay that day but you know you, you don't want to you don't want to deal with the oil leak like that you want to fix it so and that's what we're doing right now okay so uh the next video you see is uh or the next section to this video that you'll see is us trying to clean this up and uh get it get it ready to put back on i'm going to dry fit it a couple times um before i i uh actually put any uh, sealant material on there because um, I, I want to be able to do it in one shot and not not mess up the material that I put on there uh, so I, I want to figure out and uh, you know we might video this I want to fit video I want to figure out how to mount the the valve assembly one time so that means kind of put it in put the bolt through and tighten it down and squeeze that material without you know on off turn uh you know uh, basically we don't want to interrupt or, or disturb or smear that material in any way we we want to leave it as a bead we want to put it on there we want to tighten it down and it squished perfectly so that we have you know give that seal the best opportunity to do its thing seal and uh we don't want to have to get back into this, uh, this thing again. So one last look at this while we got it off and, and it's all dirty. Single valve, I believe that means this. If it was dual valve, I think it would have two of them. This, this uh, material, this section would be a little bigger. So this is your actual uh, single, uh, single pole um, remote rear remote shaft you know, seal hydraulic valve right or yeah something like that big old long thing that says basically this is what controls your rear end remotes all right we'll be back here in a little bit thank you started on cleaning this thing up a um, couple things I like to do is use a razor blade uh, some alcohol or you know uh, some kind of solvent um, carburetor cleaner works real good and uh, we'll get to that here in a second um, you know pull off as much of this uh, gasket stuff as you can by hand like this and um, the rest of it will kind of do with the razor blade. Whatever doesn't come up, you know, the easy way, just pulling it like this. Don't worry, that razor blade will get it taken off real good. So, uh, here we go. We got a bunch of that off. Take this razor blade and just run it straight down. And, you know, for those of you that that have done this and, and do this regularly, hey, uh, uh, I don't mean to be boring, y'all. But, you know, there's some of us that that uh, have never done this, and man, just a little snippet of how to do it and go through it that helps everybody. And uh, you know, at one point, those of us that, that know how to do this didn't, and somebody showed us or gave us an example, and and uh, now we're showing others. Right? That's the way of life. So pretty cool to be able to be the one to pass it on pass it forward this right here kind of scary 
That's a little spot where that weld that we've been talking about hits. So we're just gonna have to goop that up real good and hopefully it won't leak. Well, not hopefully, it will not leak. One way or another we'll we'll make it right. So the other thing that, that we're gonna do is you know squirt it down real good with, with air once we got a lot of this stuff off of there. I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing here. You know, be real careful with these razor blades. If you're not comfortable with them, get your razor blade holder or a little scraper and you know, go slow. This, this is a very critical, important step of the process. So you want to do it right. And you don't want to hurt yourself, but you want to do it safely. Hope I'm not covering it up with my head and my hat there. So, speaking of safe safely I can't see what I'm doing over here so I'm gonna move this thing around a little bit uh, see one big swab of that coming off you see now this thin layer coming off that's that's what we want just keep keep getting after it and it'll clean up and uh, then the other thing I like to do once once I think I've gotten everything I can off of it with the razor blade is to kind of go over it with the little brush and uh, after the brush I like to kind of go over it with some memory cloth and you know get this thing again the trick is get it as clean as possible and uh, definitely as solvent free as possible or oil free uh, debris free and um, get it to where it's going to hold a seal it, and if you were putting a gasket on it it's the same thing right no no different i'm going to turn on my air compressor it's going to make a little noise in the background because we're getting pretty close to the point of blowing it off and uh, before I do that maybe we'll go over it a time or two you know just a little little steel brush brass brush whatever uh, Harbor Freight dollar a piece cheapo luckily this is just RTV man this stuff comes off real easy especially with one of these brushes uh, seem to have a lot of RTV and I say RTV the sealant you know whatever that sealant is that they're using Permatex RTV uh, silicone gasket maker this right here feels like it's a, a piece of gasket still left on there we'll scrape some more there you go see see how it peels right off there you go get all that off of there yeah baby nice and clean Pretty soon it should be nice and shiny. You know, just take your time. Get it right. I'm going to say you only get one chance at it. And by that what I mean is, when you do it right this time, you don't have to break into it again. Now, the truth is, you get as many chances at it as you want. But if you don't get it right the first time, exactly what you see me doing right now, you'll be doing each time you open it up. That's why it's just critical to clean, clean, clean. I've talked before about uh, my father that used to work with me on these projects. and His favorite part was cleaning. And man, that son gun could clean. I could go about my business and tear things apart and pull out gears, rebuild transmissions and on tractors, rebuild motors, 
you know, whatever it took I'd rip the stuff out and put it in a pile and man I'd turn around and he'd have it in a bucket of oil I mean a bucket of diesel a bucket of gasoline you know whatever we had around at the time and he'd be cleaning 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 by the time we got done and by the time I got done tearing apart and I was ready to start putting back in his stuff was spotless oh, drop that razor blade I'm gonna run over here real quick and turn on that air compressor build up a little pressure and in the meantime we just keep cleaning 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 this is looking good yeah, every time you go over it you'll find another little spot that you missed or... some other seal piece that stayed on didn't come out that's what's cool about this little tip, you can get down in them holes and you know, break that RTV loose out of there. Just like that. And you know, sometimes you gotta pick at it. So, um, when we get done with this, part of it we go to the other ceiling surface and do the same thing and then we'll do that dry fitting that I was talking about before we do any kind of seal on here make sure all that's right Getting closer, folks. Can't wait to get this tractor going. Then we get back to the real project at hand, which is restoration of this pontoon boat right here next to us. And that's what uh, what I've been digging on here lately. Getting my boats ready. Right now it's uh, catfish season in Texas. Them big boys, the big ones, 40, 50 pounders, are out there. I'm getting fat right before they start getting ready for spawning season. Man, I have to say I've never caught one of those big cats. But boy, I can't wait to brag and cock a doodle do all about that when I finally do. That's going to be a blast. Uh, getting back to tractors after uh, we get done with this part of the tractor repair. I believe we're going to, well, we're definitely going to do a few more things to the tractor. It's always ongoing. But the next thing is probably going to be uh, the front bucket cylinders, which I've already talked about, and also the uh, the um, the fuel pump or when I say fuel pump I mean um, the injector pump so that's a little alcohol I just sprayed on there nothing nothing big just kind of start wiping it down so you can see Every time we go around this, it gets cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And that's what we want. Cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Before you know it, we're in business.
All right, let's blow this thing off. ceiling on there and so that looks like a little ceiling surface like an o-ring groove or a, a washer goes in there we'll have to look at the uh, other side and make sure that that washer or whatever goes there is is still around um, Now that, that I look at it, that's actually the area where this thing was leaking from. So, that may be part of our problem. See how you learn as you go? Start seeing these things. The story tells itself. You just got to watch and listen and learn. All the signs are there. Alright, let's blow a little more. carburetor cleaner. Man, this stuff works good. What about leaving it clean? Be careful you don't get none down in that hole. We'll let that dry off real good. Then we'll uh, kind of go over it with a little emery cloth. And that's, when it's, that's when the whole thing gets nice and shiny. And uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right now and um, you get where I'm going. Uh, I'll show you just a little, little piece of me. Cleaning it down with some memory cloth there. You see how shiny it starts getting. It starts hollering out to seal me, seal me. That's it. Nice and clean. Pull the goopies off. There's a interesting little little thing I'm looking at here. Alright, so um we talked about uh, you know let's turn this thing over and let that thing finish draining out. Because we keep cleaning and wiping and oil keeps coming out of there. Well we're not doing any good. We're just gonna let this thing sit here and, and drain for a little while. And uh as I said we'll get back to to you here in the next little piece. Thank you. Alright, my friends, here we go. Um, we've cleaned this up, probably about as good as we're going to get it. Um, I put a little RTV in that hole that seems to be an O-ring seal. Um, I've decided, after test fitting it, that it's better to seal uh, this surface over here, so I've already went ahead and sealed it. You can see real quick what it looks like. 
all the way around I like to start off with the holes first do all the holes then come back and get my straight lines across and you know now now we're ready so um, I'm gonna grab that that uh, assembly I'm gonna put it in I'm gonna try to put a couple bolts in and you know start tightening it down and, and getting it in place um, at this point you know this is all you're gonna see as far as getting it on um, the, I have no real good place to put the uh, camera but I wanted to show you uh, what the RTV on there should look like when you put it on you, know, you could probably do a little prettier job than that but um, I've, I've sealed up plenty of gasket areas before and uh, trust me this right here is gonna suffice and work just good just just real good so okay um, here comes the fun part all this work you know to for this moment to make sure we get a good seal on the surface and and that it works and you know that's that's the ultimate goal no leak so we'll be back in a little all right real quick got it in got it installed you can see the beads starting to come out the edge just like it should um we'll inspect the front part of it that was doing the leaking make sure that's got a nice little bead all the way around it and uh you know we'll we'll see how all this transpires um at this point i'm gonna go ahead and shut this back down again uh i'm gonna go ahead and finish putting on the bolts got the majority of the bolts in got to tighten them snug them down a little bit put this plate on there and then uh get them get them tight i'm not sure what's what the uh, torque spec is but i'm not too worried about that i'm just trying to make a seal tonight um finish let let that seal cure overnight and then tomorrow or you know the next opportunity that we get after this uh cures for at least 24 hours i like to give it 24 hours i'll see what the instructions say uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. 24 hours, I think, is is probably just perfect. And then we'll see, uh, you know, how it does after that. And we'll go from there. Um, next video we'll see. We're either going to be testing this thing or next section of this video that we see. We're going to, you know, be uh, testing it to see if it leaks. and uh, Or, you know, tearing it apart because something went wrong. When hopefully that's not the case. Alright you too, what an awesome, awesome, awesome day it is today. Uh, you know what we've been doing all along, last thing we've done here was seal the, uh, the valve clock back in place. We let it uh, cure for 24 hours and I started it up. There was no leaks whatsoever. I uh, filled up the uh, hydraulic reservoir and uh, Put down one of the fender wells, let it warm up, still no leak, and uh, I uh, somewhat secured that fender well in place and went out and used it to put out some hay today for my cows, just to make sure this thing's not leaking. I'm going to take that and do it one more time, then slowly start putting it back together, mainly because it's a lot of work getting all this stuff off and put it back on, and if it happens to leak again, uh, I don't want to have to go through all that. You know, it was going to leak. Bubba, go ahead and leak now so I can tear you apart while you're still apart. But, uh, so our, our project completely a success. Um, I, I can tell by the way that it, that it runs, the lack of the squeal from the hydraulic system when I put a load on the front end loader or I lift the rear end. You know, before when I was starting it, I could hear it squeal. It took a while after it warmed up. Um, it, it, it was making, you know that noise I'm talking about, when the hydraulic system just, it, it almost sounds like it's low on, on hydraulic fuel. Well, I'm going to give you a little look at it so you can see that it's not leaking. And boy, I'm just so happy I can jump and do flips.
again it's the covers and everything need to go back on and you know I'll, I'll get to that that's the easy part uh, we, we did we did it y'all we did it we got that valve fixed and uh, fixed our leak you know we had no clue what we were looking for when we got in there and we had some idea some some technically hypothesis of what we might find well we did it we opened it up we found that, uh, that this was a used part at some point they rewelded it uh, my, my assumption is they never did put that missing o-ring in there they, they may have sealed it up uh, kind of like we did and you know I've had this tractor almost 20 years now maybe a little longer uh, and, and it's lasted that way so uh, a sealed kit uh, from, from New Holland for this little job that we did here is over $300. Um, this uh, RTV that I purchased and, and put on there, you know, that was $8, maybe $9. So, and, and I suspect it's going to last the lifetime of this uh, tractor. And if not, next time I tear that thing apart, I go to the little auto parts store here in town when I'm not in such a hurry like I was this time and, and they'll have something that'll fit in there that I'm almost guaranteed so thank y'all very much you two for hanging with me on this long video series on fixing my 1630 hydraulic leak uh, basically it was the repair of the leak in our remote rear remote hydraulic valve so Man, what an awesome day. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for helping me fix this thing. You have a great day.